Hello all my lost school friends, my name is Forge and welcome back to a brand new video. So as you can see on screen, your eyes are not deceiving you. We are on Minecraft.net and we are going to be reading about them releasing some of Minecraft's code to the general public. Which is actually just very, very awesome. Because this means that players who want to make their own games or just want to learn a little bit more about Minecraft's code, they're now going to be able to use it within their own projects which is very, very awesome. So we have ourselves an article that was written by Tom Stone, and we're going to go and see what we can actually get out of this, because there is a lot of information to go over. We're probably not going to read every single thing about it. We're just going to be reading the general info, so you guys will know a little bit about this stuff. So if you guys enjoyed this video, then please let me know by leaving a like on it, and subscribe for more videos like this in the future, and let's get started. So it says, we're opening some of the game's code. Making games isn't easy. Sure, it's not rocket science or brain surgery. Those things are probably way easier. Probably difficult to learn to code, program, and sure blind luck your way into making a video game. If only you had access to more resources. Hmm. Well, the lovely folks at Stockholm's Minecraft Java team are giving you just that by opening some of Minecraft's code as libraries so they can be used however you like. Want to use them to improve your Minecraft mods? Well, you can do that. Great idea, but to use them for your own projects, go for it. Just don't forget to credit us and want to use them to help improve pieces of the Minecraft Java engine. Thanks, we really appreciate it. Hang on, what even is a game library? Well, libraries are little parts of the game engine, explains Java developer Nathan Adams, also known as Dinnerbone. We're making some of the Minecraft... We're making some of the self-contained libraries that Minecraft uses open source. Anyone can use We're making some of the self-sustained libraries that Minecraft uses open source. So anybody can pick them up and use them in their own game. And then of course we got ourselves a little nice picture of a command. So it's gonna explain a little bit of commands. Because basically what they're intending to do is they're intending to make some of Minecraft's libraries open source. So maybe players, if they want to uh, do something with the game, or if they just want to do other stuff with their own games, then they can do it by simply using some of Minecraft's code. Because this will probably improve a lot of things within Minecraft, including mods themselves. Because mods, they are insane, but they actually have not gone as insane as they were back in the 1.7 and 1.6.4 days. But besides that, um, here's what else they say. The plan is to open up different libraries gradually. These libraries are open source and mint licensed. This means that basically anyone can go the, in there and they can contribute and they can help improve our game engine, explains Nathan. Or if they're making their own game, they don't have to rewrite these little parts. They can just use ours, which we have tried and tested because we are a very popular game, apparently. Well, that apparently is not an apparently. Apparently, it's just going to say that it is popular. So, we just have ourselves some other stuff. Okay, just talk it up, Brigader. Now, within Brigader, this is actually where they do the command stuff. So, as it says it right there. So, in the game, you can type something like slash give dinner bone sticks. And then, that goes internally into Brigader and breaks it down into pieces. Figures out what you are trying to do with this random piece of text. So basically, that's pretty much what they do for the different codes. So then you can go ahead and have different types of uh, things right there, like the little tabs, which is actually pretty cool. So every single command that you use, remember, it's going into Brigader. Just think about that for a minute. I mean, it's a lot to take in, but this is pretty cool. Of course, this command, we've all used commands before, probably. Even for some of us who are new to the game, we've probably known some of the commands, like slash give or slash t set time today or something like that we've all used them and then we also have ourselves the data fixer upper so let's read about this the name is so stupid that we had to keep it explains nathan unapologetically data fixer upper does exactly what it sounds like it's one of the most important parts of the minecraft game engine and it's also the second library that we're opening up the problem that we have in minecraft that i'm pretty sure every game has is that the data changes over time and also creates bugs not to mention that the bugs are very very horrible and I, we add a thing into minecraft 
and then we kind of have to change how we store level data, how we store all the save files and stuff to accommodate it. When we load up any world in Minecraft right now, you can have some data that has not been touched in six years. That's actually very true. Minecraft is that old. Because that chunk was last played six years ago, so we need to know, okay, this level actually looks really old. Now we've got to turn that old data into what it should look like now, in a way that the game can currently read. Which, of course, is very, very awesome because if you have yourself a Minecraft world that is very, very old, you want it to be able to be played with the new version of Minecraft, but you don't want anything within that chunk or world being broken. You know, you don't want anything broken because let's say you built a big, huge cathedral, and then this has happened in some instances, including in the early Minecraft 1.13 snapshots, if you guys remember. Uh, but basically, if you try to load up an old world, there'll be chunks missing. Half your build would probably be gone. So that castle you spent six years working on, guess what? If you accidentally load it up within a different version of Minecraft that's not very good at loading that stuff up, then it's gonna end up breaking it. So always, always back up your stuff is what everybody says. So remember, if you don't back up your stuff, you could lose your favorite build. Then this. So another thing that to say is that we have one little unit which uses data fixer upper that just says to Minecraft, this is how to turn anything into the data format that the game is going to use. And so the game is now only gonna say, this is how the data looks. So this is how I'm gonna read it. Very true Minecraft, I mean, way to go, you know how to read. Basically before Minecraft actually loads the chunks, it goes through data fixer upper and that turns it into what it should currently be now. Confused? Confused? That's fair. Data fixer upper is a lot less user friendly than Brigader, but that's also one of the reasons why we're making it available to everyone. So if you guys ever want to use this within your game for, for like, let's say you want to have data fixed up or something like that, then this is probably going to be for you. But of course, it's pretty much just explaining stuff about Minecraft and just explaining that it's not going to mess up any code. It's just going to go ahead and fix that code. And so that way it actually works within the current version of Minecraft, which is just very, very awesome. And I tell you what, coding, it is very, very confusing. So if you guys would like to play around with any of the stuff, there will be a link down below in the description so you can go and download Brigader and as well as the data fixer upper. But I think that majority of people or players in this case, they're probably not going to use this. But for some mod creators or people making their own game, then this is going to be just for them, okay? This is specifically for players who want to look within the Minecraft code or just want to go ahead and make their own mods or just want to make their own game. So do bear that in mind. Now, of course, that's pretty much it on this video. I just wanted to go and make this video just to let you all know about what's going on with Minecraft. So that way you will know that this is now a thing. That Minecraft, it is gradually becoming open source. And according to the developers a few years ago, they said that eventually Minecraft won't get any more updates. Then it would have to be up to the community to make updates for Minecraft. So this could be potentially one of the first steps of that but I could be wrong on that one, so do not quote me on that. But if you guys enjoyed this video, then please let me know by leaving a like on it and subscribe for more videos by me in the future. And for now, I hope that you have a logical day, and I will catch you next time.